Hello, hello everyone and welcome to one of the best of show. Today, this number of the, your show is going to be on, in English. The first part is going to be in English because the, our guest is going to be Dr. Xise. We're going to have right now in a few seconds. So thank you for turning on and sharing this show with your friends. We're going to talk about politics. We're going to talk about elections in Gambia. And the second part is going to be in French. And our guest is going to be Mr. Jean-Claude Homao. So we're going to talk about with him, with his movement right now. So merci infiniment à tous et à chacun de vous. Cette émission spéciale que vous suivez sur les ondes d'Afro TV. Euh, la première partie sera en anglais, la deuxième partie en français. Et merci infiniment de partager cette émission avec les uns et les autres. On s'excuse un peu donc de ce petit retard accusé. Vous devez savoir également que nous sommes euh, en plein pied dedans pour euh, parfaire également donc euh, nos émissions. Merci euh, d'être avec nous. Thank you for being with us for this show. We're gonna have Dr. Ismaël Ismaël Sissé. So, uh, Dr. Ismaël Sissé is a president uh, of Citizen Alliance presidential candidate in Gambia. So you are running right now for the candidate uh, for the presidential in Gambia. So we are very grateful. Hello, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ismail Asise. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you, uh, Moses. Thank you for having me on your program. Thank you very much. I, think I just want to guide this opportunity to thank everyone who are watching us right now who can share this show. So we're going to talk about your country, Gambia. Maybe you're going to have, you're going to be the next president in Gambia. So I just want to thank God for your life. And also, this is the time to, uh, to ask you and uh, to ask you many questions to get many uh, answers from you, Dr. Ismail Asise. And for those who don't know you yet. Well, thank you very much once again. Uh, my name is Ismail Sisi, like you rightly mentioned. I'm a Gambian, a young Gambian, uh, an academic by training and profession. I did my basic and secondary school in the Gambia. I did my university education in Sweden, where I did my bachelor's degree in political science, and my master's and PhD in Scotland the, at the University of Edinburgh, where I did my master's in African studies and PhD in Africa as well taught at the University of the Gambia for 10 years, head of political science department, um, initiated the master's program in international relations, which I directed for a couple of years, and now I'm into politics. Now you are in the politics. Uh, so what is your best motivation? What, is, what brings you to the politics? Because you got many talents, you got many diplomas, and this is the time to, to, to tell us and to tell all the diaspora right now, what brings you, what is the motivation in politics, your real motivation in politics? My motivation is to provide effective leadership uh, that has been lacking in the Uganda, effective, innovative leadership. Um, that can be able to align the potential and the power of this country, uh, which has not been happening before. We've seen that since independence, the power and the potential has not been matched by the leadership needed to transform this country and build a modern Gambia, to ensure that every Gambian lives a dignified life, that young people have access to jobs, that every Gambian has access to quality health care where you are, you don't have to go far, that every child has access to quality relevant education, uh, no matter from which part of the country you are born, no matter from which parents, no matter your gender um, or your sexuality, that you have access to quality relevant education, that people have access to clean water, um, people have access to cheap, affordable, clean electricity, and we have the right infrastructure. So not only that, the motivation is also spurred by my desire to be part of that generation of young Africans that will build Africa uh, for the next generation yet to come looking at the demographic trends, the industrial trends, the social trends. We know that Africa has enough opportunities uh, and potential, but also enough challenges. Our population is set to double um, in, by 2050. We'll be 2 billion on the African continent. And the same thing for Gambia. We need to build a con country uh, that can house 2 billion people to ensure they all live in dignity. Thank you for watching us. Uh, I got many people online right now who are watching us on Facebook. You can just uh, click uh, on our page, uh, Afro Web TV, or just just visit right now AfroWebTV.com slash live, and you will be on with us and share this show with all Gambia people, all African people. We are talking about politics. We are talking about uh, African African politics right here. So thank you and thank you for being with us right now. So we are talking about your 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 party too and which is uh, Citizen Alliance Presidential. So uh, what is the goal of your, your party? Well, the goal of my party is very simple, is to initiate or establish uh, the institutional mechanisms needed 
to generate wealth uh, for the Gambia, uh, generate create jobs for young people, decent jobs for young people, so they can see themselves in this country and succeed in this country without taking the back with Europe. To also ensure we raise living standards um, in this country and also to invest and enhance social services so that every Gambian obviously uh, can see themselves in this country, can feel that they are part of this country. To unite the nation, obviously, and also to lessen our dependency on Western aid and grants, to re believe in ourselves and harness our resources, our indigenous resources, to generate wealth needed that we can invest in people. So basically, these are our, these are our objectives, to build a country, a democratic republic, where the rule of law exists, where every right is respected, both political and civil rights, and to ensure there is stability as well in this country, and to create a country also not only solve today's complex problems, but also to build a country for the next generation as well, and to prepare uh, this country and make it ready for the 21st century, especially within the context of globalization. So at least uh, you are the, you, you are part of the new generation and you are very clever. Well, what can, can you tell us a little bit about your project, uh, your project you have for all Gambia population, even in diaspora or in Gambia right now? Well, for the diaspora, obviously, we know that there is power in the diaspora. Uh, the diaspora has enormous potential in terms of wealth and knowledge. Yeah. We want to attract the diaspora back home. Um, to the, we want to reverse the brain drain. We want to reverse the brain drain. So that those in the diaspora, not only Gambian, but African diaspora have to come home and contribute. We need to build uh, yeah. an Africa for the 21st century. Like I said earlier on, our population is set to double by 2050 to 2 billion people. 65% will be young people and they need jobs. We need to invest in education, invest in agriculture so we can have food security. Invest in the energy sector so we can uh, lessen our reliance on, on oil and, and heavy fuel so we can yeah. look in-house and use our indigenous resources to provide energy for our people. But this is what we want. We want a Gambia and also an Africa, mm. where every woman, every child, every man, no matter your age, you can live a dignified life in Africa. Our yeah. workers are respected and they are paid the value of their labor. Our mm. women can be part of this and making table so that they will, not, they will not be discriminated against based on their agenda. Our young people are not fitted and feeling deprived so that can feel that they also can contribute by giving them the requisite training they need. So we have to invest in education as well. This is our vision uh, for the government, also our vision for Africa. Yeah, but uh, in your vision, you, we think like you, you are focused on right now on economics and many things. Can you share with us a little bit about your, your vision and your mission for Gambia and maybe if you are you're gonna be, how you're going to be the next president and if, for example, you, you are the next president in Gambia, what are you going to do? What is your mission exactly for Gambia? Our mission, like I said, is to, is to generate wealth, is to, um, is to create the right environment for investment. We want to invest global capital into Gambia. We believe that this is one of the ways in which we can provide decent jobs for our people. This is one of the ways in which we can believe that Afri at least Africa can move away from subsistence agriculture to large-scale agriculture, which is also good for industrialization uh, in the manufacturing sector, where Af Africa takes part in global trade and not only be biased, uh, of consumers of global goods, but also producers of global goods. So we shift the role we play in the global marketplace. This is what is our vision for uh, the Gambia, where we build a knowledge economy, that we train our people, create the right environment, the right regulatory framework to protect our environment, protect our workers, attract foreign direct investment into the country, which is responsible and also which is developmental. Uh, this is our vision. So it is the kind of economy we want, and also we understand that the market is good at generating wealth, so therefore we'll invest in the private sector, we'll let the private sector to, to, to flourish, to generate wealth. But the state has to come and regulate to ensure that while the private sector is generating wealth, but it wants to in a sustainable way, so that our environment is not destroyed, our people are not exploited. But the wealth generated from this private sector-led initiative is invested back into the people and not stolen by politicians and saved in their bank accounts abroad, that we invest in education, we invest in healthcare, in basic infrastructure, both digital infrastructure, we invest in energy infrastructure, health infrastructure, we invest in education, um, we invest in food security and so that Africa can now and Gambia can feed itself and not rely on food imports to survive. So this is our vision, but also to build a democratic republic where the rule of law flows and, and, and thrives, where we fight corruption and make sure that we, we reduce uh, graft 
and make sure that the money is invested in people, goes back to the people, so that every Gambian, every African, every citizen can live a dignified life. We all know, we all know that we have a lot of problems in Africa, especially in Gambia, why you know. So what is going to be your first step? Uh, what are you going to do first when you are you're going to be the next president in Gambia? First is to unite the nation. We have a very polarized country. After the defeat of the former president in 2016, the transition was supposed to bring in democracy. Uh, the side in the something went wrong because you have to remember that the transition was a complicated process. The procedure was not very successful. That led to an impasse. So the idea was that now we should come up with reform, unite the nation, reform process were aborted at some point. So my first task is to unite the nation so every Gambian can feel that you are part of this country and you don't feel that you are being discriminated against based on your ethnicity or based on your gender or based on your religion. So first is to unite the nation. Two is to initiate those reforms that are needed to put the gap on a path to development, the key reform, especially institutional reform, to build strong institutions that will ensure transparency and accountability that can help us fight corruption and that can help us also understand uh, that stability is key to maintain that peaceful environment because if, without stability and peace, uh, we cannot achieve any meaningful development. So this is the force where we are going to focus on, we to make sure we unite the country first, initiate necessary reforms, the legal reforms, new legal framework that can ensure that as a market, security sector reform, where the security has an important role to play within a democratic context, and also a civil service reform where we kind of trim the bloated civil service and make it more efficient to serve the people are going to invest in the social service, but also to fight corruption, because we think the country is losing a lot of money uh, through corruption, through leakages, not only within the public sector, but also among the state-owned enterprises. We need to reform all those state-owned enterprises to make them more profitable to serve the people and let the government also serve the people rather than the people serving the government. And these are the things that we'll focus on in our 400 days in office. Especially when we are talking right now, we got a little problem about networking, and that's the one problem you, you almost have in Africa right now. So you are part of the young generation now, and uh, I'm going to ask you your strength, your strength you, you got to, to run or to win this presidential. What is your strength? Can you share with us a little bit for, and with the new generation who are following, who are following us right now, the, your strength, you have to win the new generation and why exactly Gambia people or the new generation in Gambia will choose you as a new president? From the fact that obviously I'm young and Gambia has a very young population, the median age of this country is 17 years old. 65% of this country are below between 25 and 35 years old. It's a young population, um, youthful population, highly connected. All they want is hope and inspiration and I can really instill that hope and inspiration. I'm a young person as well, and I've, I know how it feels like growing up in the Gambia as a young person. The deprivation, living within the context of inequality, joblessness, frustration, uh, being discriminated against, I've experienced all those things. So therefore, I know how it feels. And for us, it's about making sure that every young Gambian is part of this broad, uh, what I would call uh, this broad march towards development. So this is what we want to do. Um, my strengths, obviously, are that I have the vision, I have the compassion, and also I understand the country's complex problems, which I have been diagnosing for far too long, and have prescriptions to solve those problems. Not only that, I also have anticipated uh, future problems, knowing what will happen in 50 years' time. What country do we want to build in 50 years' time? By looking at demographic trends, environmental trends, trends. I know exactly the kind of Gambia we want to build in 2050. Uh, in 25 years time, sorry, 2050, uh, based on what the population we have, how we want to build it. So that is there. But also, I have a team around me. Um, governance is complex. One, one month, what you do, you are the pilot, you navigate, you have the vision. We need a team uh, that can work around. We have a very strong team within the Citizens Alliance who are experienced technocrats as well as politicians who've worked for government before and know how it works. So these two, two combine together. My understanding of the complex problems, my vision, my compassion, and also my, and also the team I have around me also who's experienced in government, uh, years of experience working for government across different sectors. It's a combination which is very strong and which, when given the chance to govern, will really bring something to the table and we'll see transformation, real transformation 
within five years. Really transformation. Do you think the, the, the right president, what is the, your relationship uh, with the government right now? And do you think uh, they manage very bad the Gambia right now, the country of Gambia? And uh, what, is, what is your real uh, relationship with the president? Well, apart from the fact that he is in, he's the president, I mean, the opposition, uh, our relationship that I hold him accountable uh, p uh, based on policies, uh, when he does something wrong, I hold him accountable and make sure that the, he upholds standards defeating a, pres a presidential office, obviously. Um, they've made a lot of promises before they came to power. None of these promises have come to pass. They've reneged on every promise. They promised to serve for three years. They reneged on it. They promised reform. Reforms, constitutional reforms, legal reforms, nothing. With no constitution, no new electoral laws, uh, no security sector reform, nothing. We've not seen anything. So obviously, they also have not been able to fight corruption, and we've seen how it has become endemic now in the past three, four, five years. But also, they have no vision for this country. They have not been able to articulate a coherent blueprint for the Gambia in terms of where we are heading to. So all this makes us obviously hold them accountable for these things and make sure that um, they really fulfill their promise they don't we have to go back to the people and tell them look these guys you cannot trust them because every promise they've made they've reneged on those promises and they have no vision for you as well in terms of the direction the country should take they're not also successful in uniting the country as the country becomes more polarized every day and every day the, well, the rhetoric that is happening in this country become more septic and which obviously we very dangerous for this country so we have to hold them accountable hold them in check to ensure that they govern within the confines and the pretext and the framework of the rule of law. And that is our relationship with this government. So as a new generation, as a new generation, tell me what did you do already to impact the new generation in Gambia? Well, it's to share knowledge. Uh, we believe that knowledge is power. And if Gambia is to move to the next century, to the 20, if to move to the next stage of transformation. We need to equip the young people with the knowledge they need to transform this country. And when I finished my studies in abroad, the first thing I decided was to come back home to Gambia to reverse. I was one of those who reversed the, the brain drain, and I became one brain gained for the Gambia when I came home. Um, I worked at the university for 10 years, preparing young minds, um, equipping them with the tools that we need to transform this country, tools of self-belief, of patriotism, um, tools of, you know, that we can make it. And I've been doing that for 10 years at the university, preparing a cadre of young Gambians across all sectors. So that has been my contribution. And I've seen how many young people were inspired by me t taking a role at the University of the Gambia teaching political science. I've seen how numbers have really multi multi multiplied uh, over, over the past five to 10 years. When I started the university, we had about 200 students at the political science department that kind of went up to 1,000 to 2,000 students doing political science. And all these people are prepared to lead the vanguard uh, to bring this country back onto the path of development and dignity. Our guest today, ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is going to be, is be is, uh, the Dr. Ismaela Sikse, the leader of Citizen Alliance, the presidential in Gambia. So you are running right now for the presidential. I'm going to ask you if uh, you got a, a good relationship with diaspora because we know that uh, many people in, from Gambia, we got a great community from Gambia people in diaspora, even in the United States here. So tell me your relationship with the community in diaspora right now? I have an excellent relationship with the diaspora. I used to live in the diaspora before. Like I said, I lived in Sweden before for many years. I lived in the UK for many years. I was part of the diaspora. Um, so I have an excellent relationship. Recently, I went on a tour of the diaspora. I was in the UK. I was in Sweden. I was in Germany where I went to visit. I went to different places in Germany, um, Berlin, Bremen, um, Stuttgart to visit our Gambian brothers and sisters who are living there to know exactly how they are living, their conditions, and whether they are living in dignity and whether their rights are respected. So I have a very strong link and a very brilliant relationship with the diaspora. Get a good relationship with them. So we almost at the end of this interview. So tell me your message for all our followers and all our Gambia people who are following us right now on Afro Web TV and uh, and how it's gonna be, how we're gonna handle the situation if, for example, we didn't succeed for this presidential. Well, obviously, we are aiming, we are shooting uh, to, to, to really win these elections in 2021. That's our aim, that's what we are working. We've been working very hard 
in the past couple of months, we have the right strategies in place. We are going to shoot to kill this election to win it. If, but if we don't, it's elections. It's not like it is selection. It is election. It can go either way. Uh, we'll build on what we, we hope. We are strongly convinced that we are going to win this these elections. And my obviously, my final words are that Africa is on a on, on a trajectory towards greatness. Uh, like I said, everything is in our favor. If you look at China, Germany, Japan, their populations are dwindling. They don't have a youthful population. Africa's population is increasing. This is a huge demographic plus for Africa. And most of this will be young people. What we have to do now is to make sure that we start thinking and start putting in order in place those ideas and those strategies to ensure that we provide jobs for our young people, to give them the right education, to make sure that we invest in healthcare, invest in infrastructure, invest in education, to ensure that it's food security, that we can feed ourselves, that we can also provide, provide our own energy needs, and that we can build innovative centers to create our own um, pandemic, uh, our own vaccinations where whenever the need arises, so we don't have to rely on the West to give us handouts or vaccines when we are sick. And that I think it is time for Africans to come to do it alone for the diaspora. A lot of wealth diaspora, a lot of knowledge is sitting on the diaspora. What we need to do now is to make sure that this wealth and this knowledge comes to Africa to benefit Africa. How we do that is to attract, create the right environment to attract the wealth and the knowledge of the diaspora so they can come home so we can build the Africa that we want. The Africa that will not be for 2063 agenda, but an Africa that will talk of an agenda for now. Thank you, Dr. Ismail Asise. So, can you tell us your message right now to end this in radio on Afro Web TV? And we are very grateful. This is opportunity for me to thank uh, uh, your collaborator, Nene, who, who, who are able to do many things for me to help me out for this show too. So, I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you, Dr. Ismail Asise. So, what is your last message for, uh, to end this, part, this first part of our show? Well, I we, uh, thank you. Keep up the good work. Um, this is one of the great roles that you are playing for Africa, spreading the message and also highlighting and, um, and, and kind of bringing out African talent and also good African ideas. So I thank you for your platform, for giving me the chance. I appreciate it. And also I thank all your, all your viewers, Citizens Alliance viewers. Um, we are ready to take this country 2021. All your viewers in the diaspora and wherever they both in Gambia, any diaspora, I thank you and I thank you for your time and I thank you as well for this very great interview. Thank you, Dr. Ismail Asise, the leader of uh, Citizen Alliance Presidential in Gambia. So good luck. I, I, I hope you're not gonna you're not gonna lose our connection because maybe you're gonna be the next president. Very, I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful to, for having you in this show. Thank you and see you next time. Que pensez-vous de l'actualité africaine cette semaine Chaque semaine, nous vous invitons à décrypter l'actualité de la semaine avec nous sur votre télé Afro Web TV. Retrouvez les analystes politiques pour donner les différents points de vue sur des sujets de l'heure chaque mercredi à 11h et chaque samedi à partir de 11h Centra Time sur Afro Web TV. Pour participer, appelez-nous ou envoyez-nous des messages par WhatsApp sur le plus 1 319 462 89 79. Toutes les émissions disponibles sur afrohebtv.com et sur notre chaîne YouTube. Afrohep TV présente Every Sunday Sharing Success Show présenté par Mr. Roger Achu. Let's get me piece of advice and knowledge from the wise man. Roger Achu will be on air every Sunday, 2 p.m. Central Time, to share with you the secret to, to have success and to reach many types of your goals. Follow your show, Sharing Success, with Mr. Roger Achu. Show available on YouTube, AfroWeb TV, and www.afrowebtv.com. Retrouvez les serviteurs et servantes de Dieu pour répondre aux interrogations de l'équipe d'Afroweb TV et des téléspectateurs chaque samedi à partir de 11h par le biais d'Edith Aïna. Notre émission n'en parle animée par Edith Aïna sur Afroweb TV chaque samedi à partir de 11h de Chicago ou 12h à New York ou encore 18h GMT. 
on en parle. C'est cette émission qui traite toutes les questions relatives à la vie chrétienne et des sujets qui vous intéresseront sûrement. On en parle, c'est sur Afro TV chaque samedi à partir de 11h, heure de Chicago, 12h à New York ou 18h GMT. On en parle, disponible sur la chaîne Afro TV et sur www.afrohubtv.com. Que pensez-vous de l'actualité africaine Vous cette semaine leur voix dans Chaque semaine, nous vous invitons à décrypter l'actualité de la semaine avec nous sur votre télé Afro Web TV. Retrouvez les analystes politiques pour donner les différents points de vue sur des sujets de l'heure chaque mercredi à 11h et chaque samedi à partir de 11h Centra Time sur Afro Web TV. Pour participer, appelez-nous ou envoyez-nous des messages par WhatsApp sur le plus 1 319 462 89 79. Toutes les émissions disponibles sur afrohubtv.com et sur notre chaîne YouTube. Retrouvez les serviteurs et servantes de Dieu pour répondre aux interrogations de l'équipe d'Afrohub TV et des téléspectateurs chaque samedi à partir de 11h par le biais d'Edith Aïda. Notre émission n'en parle à nous. Thank you.